Okay, so please, good evening. Um, my name is Topo Kwesi Kwansa, and I will be taking you through the numerical analysis stream. So how this is going to be done is that we have some mock questions, and we want to go through some of them with you. There are about 105 questions, and we wouldn't want to spend a lot of time on everything. So we'll go through some of them, the, the ones we think are important, the ones we think are important, and then um, when we get to a point that oh we can skip the entire point, we would, we would skip. So the, the entire numerical analysis course is split into four different topics. Right? Um, the linear systems, the linear and non-linear systems, right? Then um, you would move on to the polynomial. Yes, so sorry for that. Uh, we are back, right? Um, the linear systems that, that's that's um, the direct and the iterative methods, polynomial interpolation, and finally the numerical integration. So these are the four various topics, and then um, the more questions contain questions on almost everything. Right? I think only the nonlinear is not really represented the way that I wanted it to be, but it will give you a um, full idea of what the exam would be, right? So please let's begin. And if you know anybody who hasn't yet joined the stream, but you think the person will benefit from um, solving some questions, then please invite the person, right? And please, please do subscribe. And we see your, and we see all your comments. We see all your questions, and we will answer them accordingly. So please, please subscribe. <laughs> Yes, so um I, I didn't mention this, but the questions are in the description. All right, so just go to the description. And then click the link. It will take you to a Google Drive and um, file. This is the file. Right? This is the file. And then you would be able to access and follow with us. So this is it. This is the file that we'd be working with. You understand? This is the file that we're working with. Um, yes, yeah, so I feel everybody has um, checked, you've downloaded it. You have the questions with you. So please now let's 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 begin. Okay. Yes, so you have a set of equations. You have three equations. And then the question the question goes like the question goes like the above system of equations has a unique solution, no solutions, infinitely many solutions, a trivial solution, none of the above. So so many people saw this in their um midterm and it became an issue. So I want I want to let, let's let's talk about everything, right? So um, a system of equations can have four different types of solutions. Four different types. Right. The first one is that it can have infinitely many solutions. The second one is that it has no solution. The third one is that it has a unique solution. And the fourth one is that it has a trivial solution. Now, the trivial solution is most at times compared to the no solution. Right? A trivial solution is a solution that, for, how, how, the, for a lack of a better term, it doesn't really make sense. Right? So, trivial solution. So, most at times, this, this is not, we don't talk about this. So, we'll talk about the, the first three. We won't, we won't talk about it. So, for a system of equations to have infinitely many solutions, a form of, it, it should be in the form 0x is equal to 0 right this means that x can be any value from zero to infinity and then it will still make this equation correct you understand that's why we talk about it having infinitely many solutions now when something has when an equation has no solution it should be in the form zero x 
should be equal to an actual value so let's say 16 right this 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 right that means that no value on earth whether real whether imaginary whether complex whether anything whether real would make this x will make this particular equation ever valid you understand or maybe you, your theorem is is as we are bringing out the theorem that will make this valid but currently there's there's no number right that will ever make this valid that, that's when we talk about it having no solution for something to have a unique solution it must have something like a particular number 4x is equal to 16. there's only one number that will make this particular equation correct you understand in the loosest sense right so it has one solution perfect so now we have the basis to talk about um something like this this equation having we will be able to determine whether it has a unique solution whether it has no solution infinitely many a trivial or exactly none of the above right okay so the the interesting thing about this is that we should we should reduce it to an upper triangular matrix right you want to be able to reduce this to an upper triangular matrix and then confirm if the lowest values or the values fall into any of these categories and then you'll be able to describe it in any of them so let's go right you have two three negative one so i'm writing my coefficient matrix here negative two one one negative twelve and five so you have this as your e you understand so what is the upper triangular matrix form of this one so the u of that a we just wrote so please take some time to figure it out then right um so so um please take some time to to figure it out so um the the way that i i usually go with and probably that might be a um, uh, uh, product of the calculator i use but how i do it is that i go a2 is equal to m1 a1 and then um a3 which is my u will be equal to m2 a2 and then i'm done you understand so i find my um i find my multiplier matrix i multiply with my current coefficient matrix to get a second coefficient matrix then i find the multiplier of that and then i multiply to get my upper triangular matrix right. okay so please um we are solving it as of the moment All right, so we can move on. So the matrix that and um, the upper triangular matrix will be two, three, negative one, zero, negative seven on two, three on two, zero, zero, and negative two on seven. Yes. So so one thing that I think was obvious by didn't mention was that you need to also work for your um your solution vector right you, you your solution vector will also be your solution vector will also be augmented so you need to um find values for this as well you understand so or you need to find values for it as well so as as, as we are going on we'll, we'll finish it Yes, yeah, so that, that that's that's how we we'll do it. So right now you've gotten into a position that you can actually evaluate. Right, so um yes, yeah, so 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 let's 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 replace them by um 
and variables while also my team is getting the values for us. Mm -hmm. So let's say that this is B and this is D. Right? The, the values here are B and D. So to figure out whether it will have what type of solution, we would write it as negative 2 on 7 x3 is equal to D. Now we see that it's we can get it, it's in the form 1, 2, 3. So right now, if D is equal to an actual value, it becomes a unique solution. If D is equal to zero, right, now we would have um, infinitely many solutions. You understand? No, 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 we would have, we'll have still a unique solution. We'll still have a unique solution. I, mean, I didn't see it, we'll still have a unique solution. You understand? So we have it as this. We have it as this. So this is how we we'll determine what type of solution that we have. You understand? Equate your lowest form, sort of a box of solution, we and then try and find out what values it is. So let's say that we had zero here instead of the 2.7, we had zero here, right? We had a zero here, and then for this d, the, the d was equal to let's say 14. So that means that you can write zero x3 is equal to 14. And this one, I don't know whether you can tell me, please type it in the box, the chat box, what you think the answer would be. But the answer would have no solution, you understand. So let's say that d was also zero in this case. To get zero x3 is equal to zero. You would have infinitely many solutions, you understand. So yes, um, I think I need to, I, I don't, this question is not in it, but um, during my exam, um, during my mid -sem, right, there was this particular question that went, that went like that went like um having four minus lambda x1 plus let's say 12 x2 is equal to um no let's reduce this to to make the computation a lot simpler let's just make this lambda right lambda times x1 lambda times x1 plus um, 12 x2 is equal to let's say 120 and then 4 4 x1 plus 2 lambda x2 is equal to 16 you understand so giving this they ask that what value of lambda will make the system of equations um infinitely will, uh, will make the system of equations have infinitely many solutions so how would you solve this we already know that zero an equation of the form zero x is equal to zero will have infinitely many solutions zero x is equal to four will have no solution this this everyone number by the way it's just it's just not four you understand and then having um, um an equation of the form 14 x is equal to 12 would have a unique solution you understand this is this, this, this what these are the three types of equations that we can have in the system so how would you solve this would go we we'll still go the previous way lambda 12 4 2 lambda x1 x2 is equal to 120 16. so the asking what value of lambda would have it so you obviously know what will happen right We'll go um, naive Gaussian to have M21 R1 plus R2 to find out what our uh, upper triangular matrix will be, right? And upper triangular matrix, you know that the pivot rule doesn't really change. It, it, it will never change. So we can write this and still be in the right, right? So we have the lambda being negative 4 on lambda times the entire R1 plus Enter R2, you understand? So since you know that this will get to zero, we can just focus on this one and this, you understand? So I'm multiplying 12, this is 12, this is 12, this is 12, and then this one would give us 16. No, this one is 12, and this one would give us two lambda. So I'm looking at the 12. All right, so you have negative 48 on lambda, plus 2 lambda and that's that's what will come here right negative 48 on lambda plus 2 lambda and then you would have you do the same thing for this side right negative let me just fit it in here right you have um you would have what would you have negative 
It's negative 480 over lambda plus 16. That's what you would get over here. Right? So now you have this type of equation. You have this type of equation. I I I just I just assume that you know what will happen next, right? So you want for infinitely many solutions, it has a very, very specific um form. 0x is equal to 0. That means that you want negative 48 over lambda plus 2 lambda to be equal to 0. And at the same time, you want negative 480 on lambda plus 160 to be equal to 0. Okay. And you want like both of them, both lambdas to have the same value, you understand. So what value of lambda would give you 0 in both cases? And that's what you're trying to find. And that is that, that's how you find the solution. So let's say that the value of lambda that will give you zero in this situation, let's say that it was 14, something like that, right? This is just a random number because our example was very, very random. We don't expect actual values to work here. Nobody, nobody wants to solve it, right? So let's say that the lambda that will make this zero is four, and the lambda that will make this zero two is also four, right? So that means that for a system of equations to have infinitely many solutions lambda would have to be four this i hope you're understanding all that i just all that i just said right so please let's 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 move on so for this particular question what if, if when you do it you realize that it has Oh, okay, okay, okay. So what we got um at the end was two, three, negative one, zero, negative seven on two, three on two, zero, zero, negative two on seven, x one, x two, x three is equal to four four negative fifty two on seven so from this no you you realize that the system would have um, a unique solution you understand because this is an actual value and this is an actual value so after doing all the division that you can do you will still get an actual solution so we maintain that it has a unique solution i hope you do understand Yes, please. The answer is E. <laughs> sure. So now, if, if it has a unique solution, what 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 is the solution to the system? So we've reduced it to an upper triangular matrix in this form, right? That makes it way, way simpler. Right, that makes it simpler. So we just have to do back substitution. And then we get an answer. So negative 2 on 7 times x3 will give you negative 52 on 7 that means x3 will give you negative 52 on 7 all divided by negative 2 on 7 and that gives us 26 that gives us 26 all right so in the second so we move from here to this side all right so that's how back substitution works we have negative 7 on 2 x2 plus 3 on 2 x3 is equal to 4 we have this particular value as 3 on 2 times 26 is equal to 4. So let, let's work this out before we include this part. Right. So then we have 39 giving you 4. Moving this over the equal sign to get 4 minus 39 to give us negative 35. And then you have 7 on 2 x2 from this side. And then you do a cross multiplication and then you find out the answer. This becomes 10. Perfect. All right, so let's go and see if we have an answer with it at 10 and then 26. All right, so we don't have to solve any further. There's none. Yes, yeah, so there's none, none. So let's, let's, let's solve it. Wow. Okay. So we have 2 times x1 plus 3x2 minus x3 will give you 4. All right. Where you move both over the equal sign. So I was told that um, in JHS, they told me that you don't move it over the equal sign. It is a subtraction from both sides. So that's, that's how we write it correctly. So we subtract it from both sides. 
to get x2 being 10 plus x2 being 10 plus x3 being 26 all over 2 and for the math which is about to it is zero right all right so we have c as the answer all right thank you so the significance of performing forward elimination when using the naive gaussian elimination method is to reduce the coefficient matrix to one of the following um, matrices right so from this particular question you realize what we reduce it to we reduce it to a matrix that has values in the upper triangular half you understand so we call this um an upper triangular matrix you understand d so yes it is very important to keep the statements and the conditions in your mind you understand it's it's questions really come from there so it's not only the solving right during the process of forward elimination steps in naive gaussian elimination for a set of equations ax is equal to c so that means that there are matrices and counting division by zero implies that the coefficient matrix e right so now what the question is asking that um if if you meet a division by zero what is the like what what is the how can you describe that matrix let's put it that way how can you describe that matrix now the thing is that encountering a division by zero doesn't imply anything about the matrix you understand it doesn't it doesn't imply anything it doesn't mean um whether it's non-singular it doesn't mean whether it's singular it doesn't mean whether it's invertible so um singular is is um, a matrix that has a determinant and then non-singular is a matrix that doesn't have a determinant mm -hmm. Right, an invertible is a matrix that an invertible matrix is an, a matrix that has an inverse. So this this the, you can see that this obviously is connected to this one, right? If something has um a determinant, you obviously have an inverse, and this means. So we pick this as an uh, answer because, as I said, uh, division by zero doesn't tell you anything about the matrix. So all matrices can be divided into singular or non-singular. So this is the most broad term that we can have. That's why we pick C as an answer because every matrix is either singular or non-singular. You understand? Okay. Let's move. Um, question five. Given that the profile of velocity of a machine at t is equal to twenty-one is estimated by a quadratic polynomial v t is equal to this, what will be the correct set of equations that will help calculate the values a? B and C using the data below. Okay. So I'm um, I'm sure everyone <laughs> I'm sure everyone has done has revised the interpolation um, methods, the direct interpolation. So please let's quickly go over the question. So if if, if you've not and you want a recap on the interpolation, please let me know. Type it in the chat box so that we know what to how to um move on forward you understand okay cool so you see you are giving t at 21 so that's the first one that you need. you're giving t at 21 and your intervals in your um system were 0 14 15 20 30 35 so what you're looking for is a range that you you, you can interpolate 21 from so the thing is that um in, in in mathematical like prediction there are two types the interpolation and the extrapolation so in fact you can actually um predict um, numbers when you're not giving the range so for example if let's say you're giving zero and ten and you are told to predict what at 20 will be you can do that it's called extrapolation but the only total interpolation so we just assume that if um you um you're giving a range of zero to ten and then you're giving 20 you pick none for the answer because there's no way you can get that you understand with mathematical interpolation cool so given 21 and um, given 21 obviously you the range that you are you are working with will be 15 and 20 but then since you're giving we are they are told to use a quadratic polynomial you need to extend it further to either either side right so you look at it so it's it's, it's a choice thing it's a choice thing right which one is closer is 14 15 20 closer to your hey please sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry i missed it i missed it yes so you have to find the two that is in between first right so that is your 20 and your 30 at the identity your 20 and your 30 right and then at first then you look around which one would, would help right whether 
So you are given a quadratic polynomial, meaning you need three different times, right? So you found two, 20 and then 30. So now you, you can either go here or you can go here. Pick one of them and then use them. So now your three different times are... With three different times are 15 seconds, 20 seconds, and 30 seconds. And then you build your matrix. Yeah, so... Okay, yeah, so what will happen is that you would need to write equations for them. So you are already given an equation, but if I'm not given an equation, please, this is, this, this is how the equation must look. It's a normal quadratic equation. So it is a t, a t squared plus b t plus c. You understand? This is a squared value, this is um, a linear value, and this is a constant. You understand? So you have to find for each of them. So when v is 15, you have um a and then 15 squared is 2 2 5 plus b 15 plus some c value then when v is 20 you have a 400 plus b 20 plus some constant value and when um v is when t is 30 you have 900 plus b 30 plus c right cool and then you see what will happen is that yes so we, we, we can move on what will happen is that when v is when t is 15 it has an actual value in your table so there's it right when v is 15 you have value as 3 2 Eh, sh sorry. Have your value as three six two point seven eight. When it is twenty, you have it as five one two point three five. When you have it as thirty, it is six zero point one nine. Right. So this this all have some values over here. And then if I made you you build um a matrix from it, right? So what you would get is two two five four hundred nine hundred. 15 20 30 1 1 1 a b c is equal to their values from the table you understand and then that becomes your particular answer so um the particular answer i think it's b right it's, it's gotten by b so b becomes our, our equation of choice you understand Perfect. So using so as I said, then we'll just be going through them, and then um, for some of them, we'll solve them, we'll solve them. I'll just describe how it is solved, and then if there are mistakes, we would we'll talk about them. Sure. So for question six, right? Yeah. They're using so some some words of interest here. Four significant bits with chopping. Four significant digits with chopping, and then I'm um, using um, a naive Gaussian elimination method. So this one basically find your e. So these are the steps, right? Write it in matrix form, right? Then the second one is to find your upper triangular matrix, right? And, and keep in mind that for significant digits with chopping, and right? so let me, let me explain that. Let me explain that. Okay, so yeah, so because of the chopping, we would, would solve this one. Yes. But basically what chopping means is that from the most significant digit, you count down the number of times that they told you to chop. So let's say that um, it's a 16. No, no, 16 is too wild. Right? Um, it's a four, four digits chopping. Right? And then you have something like 1172.16. What happening is that with four digits chopping, there's your most significant bit. So you count down one, two, three, four, and then you chop from you every. When you mean chopping, you mean that you ignore everything beyond that. So four digits chopped of this value becomes one one seven two simply. I hope you understand. So yes, as I said, because of the chopping, we would solve that particular question. Yes. So let's go. Zero point zero zero three. 
negative 7.123 x1 x2 is equal to 58.12 47.23 right okay so what will happen is that um so you, you can you can do the you can either make it augmented or you can go the normal naive way they told you to use naive but i mean who is going to check you so m21 r1 plus r2 so we'll, we'll just shortcut ourselves and then we'll write what we got for the upper triangular here right so we got 0 0.0 0 0.5 yeah so sorry. zero point zero three five fifty five point two three fifty eight point one two zero negative one one four point nine negative one zero eight so for this one say you get actual values but you would have to chop them right so after 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 this form right so you get some values and then you count from the most significant and then when you reach where you are told to cut off where you are told to chop off then you just ignore everything that is behind it you understand perfect so you would you would do your you do your back substitution and you get as an x1 as 1.051 and an x2 you get an x2 as this sorry you saw we first as this and an x1 as 24.42 26.42 26 26.66 26 I'm very sorry and yes please um when they said chopping at every stage what that means is that at every point after every calculation you do when you get a result you no know, please chop it and be safe understand just cut it off and be safe so you get 26 point um six six in the system that is e right that is a so let's move All right yeah so one interesting um fact about upper triangular matrices is that the product of the diagonal gives you the determinant and right? so it's it is this a theorem in numerical methods so you can you can check it if you want to right you can form a matrix and then find the upper triangle of that and then check if the the determinant of the matrix a would be equal to the determinant of the matrix b yeah so um there are a couple of um special type of matrices that this applies to right it applies to lower triangular it applies to upper triangular it also applies to sorry this applies to diagonal matrices excellent so for this one you just multiply this by this by this by this right and then you would get um, d as your answer so you can you can do the multiplication it, it, would, it would give you d as your answer perfect so you can move so there's a reason why i'm, I'm trying to um get to the questions are really a lot 105 so let's see we're on page three right now so let's 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 quickly move so the naive question elimination method is used to solve the following set of linear equations one two three four the following is a triangularized form with some missing values obtained at the end of the forward elimination stage what are the setting values that you are in it's in the, your system all right so basically what you do in this one is that you need to turn this equation first of all you write it as a matrix i feel like that's the first one that we should do write it as a matrix and then find the upper triangular form of that you understand try and find the upper triangular form of that and then just compare you just compare and we'll find out which one is which all right so as as we've already solved it so this this um we'll be able to provide you the values and then you can check with us whether it's it's the same thing right so number eight is d so you get d as your answer here no no you see, you see 
Yes, yeah, so with the um chopping, it, it goes back to your significant figures theory, you understand. So the non-zero numbers are not part because every number can just be written as having infinite zeros in front of it before you. So if, if let's say I tell you that chop with two digits, it is not zero zero, right? It is the first non-zero value in your system, right? So that's that's one four. I I hope you understand. Someone just asked the question and I wanted to address that you understand yes please yes <laughs> yes so this 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 lends itself to more like one understanding so let me let me go again right with something like zero zero one four and two to chop two times and chop to if you've been giving some number like this and two that and two significant they get chopping right this is actually valuable this is also actually valuable right this is this is not what we're talking about so then it becomes zero just simply zero yes three digits chopping will lend itself to 0 0.01 I, I, 0 0.001 i hope um, you understand because right after the decimal point going to this side every number is significant i hope you you do understand that yes so please let's move so yes as i said number eight is d um yes yeah, so we've, we've i would please slow down so sorry for going a little fast so number eight is d number nine is c as i said please write them down and then check with us i right, check with us if it's correct we are right but please do check with us number 10 is b number 11 is a number 12 is number 12 is d number 13 is e Number fourteen as E. Yes, 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 yes. So that's that is it for the meantime. You understand? So um we'll be placing the answers in the description box so that you can have full access to them and then you can use to check when you do solve it. You understand? Okay. So number fifteen, what method will be employed to solve the triangularized system? So given a system like this, how would you solve it, right? This one, it's it's something that you would know. That is, you do back substitution to solve your problem. Back substitution method as C. So solving to a method of choice, right? X1 is what? X2 is what? X3 is what? X4 is what? Yeah, so please let's go. Right, so as with with this one also um we solved it and then we would like you to check us right so x1 x1 the answer we got wasn't available here so x1 is equal to negative one as i said please check us x2 is x2 is b we got the two for that x3 is zero x3 is zero and that's a c and then x4 is is one that is e you understand so yes please check us and um our, our advisors will, be, will put the answers in the description box in the chat um, call button the chat box so that you can um, quickly access it let's move so 20 to 27 the following set of the following set of linear is solved with partial pivoting and so partial pivoting basically Right, so partial pivoting. So this is um linear theory. Partial pivoting is the movement of various values in your um pivot rule to um get the maximum value. The, the, this to stop your both round of error and then your division by zero. So what do I mean by that? Right. So having a generalized matrix like this. <laughs> having a generalized matrix like this right how do we partially pivot 
So we partially pivot by you pick a particular rule. So you pick a particular rule and then you find the maximum absolute value, right? And then just move it to your pivot. So with this one, in your first step, and told to partially pivot, what happened is that let's see that. Okay, so let's try out with an actual question. All right, with this one, four is um, the absolute value of four is larger than the absolute value of any value in your first rule. So you would move this entire rule up above here. And I hope you understand what that particular one means. All right, and then you solve you you solve for your um, your first one. So you do your first forward elimination and then you check the second rule um which one is the largest right the largest absolute value and then you quickly swap if that is not there and then you you, you continue again you understand so that's that's how to do push up and that's that's a quick reminder so when you solve it you would get something in this form right you get something in this form and then you would you just compare and then you get your answers you understand just compare and then you get your answers so for um 20 we got a um, negative four b as your uh, answer <coughs> and then so okay okay so let's do it like this and let's do it like this right please write out your answers in the comment section the description box will be there forever and i want you to focus so just just mark it in your notes that you would solve from 20 to 27 right and then write the answers in the um description and then in the comments sorry write it in the comments because the the live chat session will distract you write it in the comments and then we would like the ones and would we'll comment on the ones which are actually correct you understand so they can have some and um, closure on the correct one so number 28 the lu LU decomposition method is computationally more efficient than naive Gaussian elimination for solving single set of simultaneous equations. That is not true. Right? Um, B, multiple sets of simultaneous linear equations with different coefficient <coughs> matrices and the same right hand vectors. This is also not true. Um, multiple sets of simultaneous linear equations with same coefficient matrix and diff and different right hand vectors now this is true this is true this is true this is true great and the last one less than 10 simultaneous equation that doesn't depend on the number it doesn't really depend on the number okay sure so let's let's go over why it is true so a is equal to lu in lu decomposition and ax is equal to b can be written as lu x is equal to b so this is LU, this is naive Gaussian. Perfect. Yeah, so please, someone just asked for the um, PDF. As, 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 I, as I mentioned, right, at the beginning of the stream, the PDF is in the description box. There's a link. So when you click the link, it will take you to the Elisa Year 3, um, Elisa Year 3 um, Google Drive. It will take you to a particular file there. So you download the file and then you work alongside with us. You understand? So please check the description box. It is there. Thank you, um, Edwin Marfo, for drawing my attention to that. Okay. So, um, so now back to why this is true. A single set of simultaneous linear equations like that. Now, you see, the problem with the, the issue with naive Gaussian, naive Gaussian is very, very fast, right? It is very, very fast. Even though the augmented is faster than it. The only point that the... Um, LU will beat out on the um, naive Gaussian is when you have multiple sets of simultaneous linear equations with the same coefficient matrix. So you see, A has to be the same because A is equal to LU. So if A is the same, regardless of whatever B will be, because you see, A is, A is, oh, sorry. And this is your x and this is your b this is your x and this is your b this is your l and this is your u for your your optimum solution and b and l and u shouldn't change right they should mean the same and then b can change because the way you solve an lu decomposition 
is so let me let me try and prove it here let me hope that it would it would it, it makes sense right let me, let me let me quickly write it for you so a is equal to a times x is equal to b a is equal to l u you can do this you can do this decomposition you can decompose a into an, a lower triangular matrix and an upper triangular matrix so you have l u x is equal to b perfect now the thing is that you can't really solve it outright because b is still um x is still unknown so what you do is that you do l z is equal to b so you place z with this one u x you place z with that one and you know l you know b so you can solve for z perfect and if you know z r and you know u2 you can solve for x this is how it is solved for so the optimum solution is to make l and u the same when they are the same when they are the same regardless of how well, whatever b would be you can quickly just find it out and it will be way way faster than if you have a setting ax and is equal to b right so this one with this one naive question what you have to do is that you would have to find out your um, um you pick your pivot to find out your matrices do some multiplication some addition add it that's one forward elimination do it again that's another forward elimination and then back substitute that would be too long and this so this is actually simpler than that you understand so that's why i are saying that it is computationally more efficient than this you understand yes if you don't understand please let me go over it again there's something i i didn't bring because this talks about computational efficiency right I feel like let's talk about that at the end of the stream. Um, analysis on the computational efficiencies of the various algorithms that we are working with. Okay. So 29. The lower triangular matrix L in LU decomposition is given below. So this one, same vibe. It's the same vibe. So I feel like let me write down the formula so that you have them at hand. Right. First of all, you have a lower triangular matrix being equal to an m2 m1 inverse does this exist this exists right so if you want to find a lower triangular matrix you find your your upper so this is just for a, a three by three system right for a four by four system it goes like this uh, yeah for a four by four system it goes like this right if it increases it just keeps going like that right you get here uh, so this is the way to find the lower triangular matrix so what you do is so okay so let's solve this one this one i've been told to solve this so please let's move right so i'm giving 25 10 Eight, five, eight, twelve, four, sixteen, twelve, four, sixteen, and twenty-two. Perfect. So this is your E. All right. So what you do is first of all you find your multiplier matrix. Okay, yes. Perfect. So, yes. So, you find your multiplier matrix 1. Right? It's of the form this. Right? And this is M21, M31. And this is equal to... Right? To find M21, it is equal to negative A21 over A11. And to find M31, it's equal to negative A31 over A11. The way we found this was just to take this one, right? This one, you see, this one is comparable to your, your coefficient matrix. So it is negative this over this. And then for the next one, it is negative this over this. You understand? So you have negative 10 on 25, have negative 8 on 25. This is your M1. Now, to find your A2, to find your A2, your A2 is equal to your M1 times your A1. You understand that means you're multiplying this multiplier matrix by this one as you're multiplying it so if if so two things right if your calculator is very good and can do three by three multiplication three by three matrix multiplication which i believe all calculators can do or you are scarily good at 
the um, matrix multiplication you can go this way or you can just go the normal um gaussian elimination you understand the normal naive way so m1 times a1 would hand you something in the form we can do something in the form six here 14.4 here a 10.4 here and a 20.72 here All right you're giving something like this so now you have to find your m2 from this now to find your m2 it's also of the form so i hope you're seeing the trend right where they are that's where you find them so it gives you negative this right now over this so you have a negative 10.4 over the six i hope you understand all right so this is your second multiplier matrix so from this formula right you multiply m2 by m1 here and then you find it its inverse so as i said calculator work very very light work calculator work god is on your side how can you not um, um pass you understand so back to it so that gives you your e perfect so that gives your l sorry and that value you get is that value you get is the value you get is an e uh, to get an e as your value so please check please be checking and please be like alerting us if you see something that's out of the blue you won't but please try you understand like let's go the upper triangular matrix u in l u decomposition in the matrix is giving us this so they told you they told you to find l now they're telling you to find u the advantage of this method is that the second that you multiply second i did m2 by m m2 by a2 second you did that m2 by a2 you would have gotten an upper triangular matrix so you can just check with it and then you just select your answer and your answer is negative yes you get b b becomes your answer beautiful now 31 this 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 particular question is on um computational methods like the computational efficiency that's how we'll get it we'll get to it right so for this so, so with this particular one if if you want us to go over it please tell us then we'll go over it just so that we don't cause confusion in the system right what the question is basically asking you to do is to find the time that a particular um operation will take right so this is important because let's say that they, they've, we've been taught about seven methods of um solving direct linear equations right we've been taught about seven methods so which one is the most efficient for which this this topic is, is is pushing us to understand right it's called the computational efficiencies the answer you would get is it's, it's most close to this right as i said it's most nearly the answer is about seven five one two point some other terms but c is the answer to go over it but then you get c as your answer so the naive gaussian elimination method is used to same way right same way so this one just 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 turn this equation right into an so you that you write you first of all you write it in your matrix form a x equal to okay sure so back right so let's 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 continue um alpha is greater than beta plus two and then you just look at it right let's look at it and then you do your 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 movements and then you will get your answer so how would solve this is for this particular equation you can find what alpha is the inequality of alpha oh move one of move by the equal sign and you find alpha so you find three is greater than alpha right but here they told the alpha is greater than zero and b is also greater than zero so you found three is greater than alpha 
like alpha is less than the that's first one right and then for this one too you can also find it right five minus four is greater than two beta so that means beta is less than negative one on two yeah it's, 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 it's less than positive one on two you understand it's positive one on two and then for the last one alpha is greater than beta plus two right so if, if alpha is greater than beta plus two you are getting your, your inequality now how do we write it out right we we'll write it out as alpha in the middle here this here and this here right beta plus two on this side three on this side and then we have um what is it we have this this one too right so we have these two and we have this one so that means that the, uh, the particular answer we are looking for is the particular answer we are looking for is b rather is b right it is b so please please check on that so let's move on yeah, most of this is analytics eh? it's, it's formula work but it's formula analytics if you know what is happening you should be able to deduce it so let's move it so yes so 49 consider um y is equal to f of x is equal to x3 over the range this is the three nodes x0 is equal to one x1 is equal to two x3 is equal to three to construct a quadratic interpolation polynomial using the lagrangian interpolation so please please um hold on for a second right and um, people are saying that they can't access the pdf so please let me get the pdf working and then we'll get back to this right so please let's let, let, let me just run through how you would get it right so see look look at this link right you can go to this link this this are for um elisa year three materials c-u-t-t -T dot l-y slash elisa y3 you go to someone you go to <laughs> You go to numerical analysis and then these are the questions right so you can download them from here you can download it and then you can follow along with us yeah, you understand so download it with this link and then you can go excellent so we can move now yes yes so i feel like it will be better side by side okay, so we are now back perfect so we're on the lagrangian multiplier in lagrangian interpolation so let's go again right so with the lagrangian multi um, lagrangian interpolation i don't know why i'm saying multiplication yes so with the learning um, um interpolation this is this is the general formula for it right the product of everything that will come in between from j is equal to zero where j is not equal to i of x minus x j all over 
xi minus x so this is basically like your normal um summation right but we use the multiplication so this 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 how it will look like right the thing is that we'd have to it's actually a very, very long process so let's extend this one let's, let's extend this one okay hey wow okay, so let's go right so the thing the thing is that the general um formula will be used to find x of this one x1 of this and l2 of this now the thing about this is that if you look at it they told you um quadratic interpolation that's that's the first thing that you must know when you tell you quadratic um, interpolation polynomial what you're asking for will be of the form something like this right that's 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 something that they're looking for this this is how it will be that your result will be a polynomial so it's of the form something like this you understand excellent now the thing is that by giving a certain number of nodes to work with right and the nodes will be presented as um, various lagrangian um like values of each other i think there's a name for it so so the individual lagrangian coefficients that's what you would that's what is found like this right that's what is found like this so um how you would find it so the formulas are basically the same thing but the um j and i is what will change you understand cool now let's 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 find it the thing is that you've been giving y is equal to f of x is equal to f is equal to x3 right so that means x of o not is equal to one because one cubed x of one is equal to um, two so um two raised to the power three giving you eight x raised to the power x2 would give you the three three raised to the power three giving us 27 that's what you would first find right that's what you would first find so we now you have one eight and 27 as values perfect now so now let's let's go to um l o it will give you x minus x1 all over x0 minus x1 multiplied by x minus x2 all over x y. So, minus x2. You understand? This is what we give you for um L0 or L0, you understand? So now X1, you found X1 here. You found X2. You found um you found the actual values. The actual values themselves were X is equal to X1, X2, X3, giving you this one. One, two, three, and then F of X1, F of X2, F of X3 as one is 27 right so you fit them into the equation as and to fit them into the equation as x minus 2 over 1 minus 2 x minus 3 over um, 1 minus 3 Reducing it, we get right. Reducing it, sorry for the background noise. Uh, reducing it, we get this one over two x minus two x minus three you understand then we solve the same for l1 and l2 the solution of that will lead us to so i'm, I'm going to skip this and then you can solve it yourself or, or you let's do one more and then i'll leave the l2 for you right, so you can have some practice yourself so this is very very important eh? it's it's quite long so you need to be very very familiar so that your mind doesn't um just ignore it when it comes or you just say you can't solve it right Right, so x minus x not giving us 
1 over x1 minus x0 1 minus x1 minus x0 2 minus 1 x minus x2 that is 3 all over x1 minus x2 that is 2 minus 3 giving us a total value of negative x minus 1 multiplied by x minus 3 is this the value that you get and you can solve the last one by yourself l2 of x would give you 1 over 2 x minus 2 x minus 1 right you can also check that for us so now we have a 3 um, as it's called Lagrangian individual Lagrangian coefficients Perfect. Right. So um we go on with a quadratic um polynomial as okay. So your uh, your Lagrangian um, polynomial is given as right. Yes, it's 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 um it's given us your L i of x multiply by your x i you understand so we found our L i of x one x two x three as one eight and twenty seven. Charlie. So yes, you are giving one multiplied by your first one, which is one on two x minus two bracket open x minus three right, plus eight multiplied by negative x minus one x minus three plus twenty seven being multiplied by one over two x minus two x minus one i hope you know how you got to this right and just spread it out you do your expansion you do your um your evaluation and the answer you're supposed to get is six x two minus eleven x plus six you understand and that gives you that gives you a d minus c s c s c so the x is the positive and negative was passing my stop perfect so yes yeah, so um, um whilst we get some water please um let's welcome agree to continue with the rest of the questions right there are 55 more questions and <laughs> and he'll he'll be the one to take over thank you <laughs> So good evening to you all ladies and gentlemen. I'll be continuing the stream from where Papa ended. My name is Agrip Pakusikwa. And you are welcome once again to tonight's stream. Okay. So let's continue from where Papa left off. So we, we saw the number 49. We got a Lagrangian interpolation as the C, 6x squared minus 11x plus 6. Please, in case you don't understand anything, please. Send it, send your comments there in the comment section so that we will know since you are having issues with so that we will address them. All right, so the next question a matrix is said to be positive definite if and only if the determinants of all the leading principal minors are. So, if you remember in class, for for the Koleski method, you, you, for the Koleski method, you first, ask, you first have to determine whether 
it is symmetric and positive definite. Now, for positive definite, you can you can do it in two forms. The first one is that you choose an arbitrary matrix, any arbitrary matrix. Let's say X. You must find X by the matrix, and then X transpose. You must find like this, and the value you get should be greater than or equal to zero. So what you do is that if to prove that matrix A is positive definite, you choose a number of um, a number of arbitrary vectors, and then you solve this to check that your answer will always be greater than or equal to zero. That means that your matrix is positive definite. Since this is too tedious, we found another way that's using the leading principal minus. So what you do is that provided you have well, you have a matrix A11, A12, A13, A21, A22, A23, A31, A32, A33. So your first, so your leading diagonals, they, are, they all come from the principal diagonal, which are these these values. So if I take your a11, your a11 should be greater than zero. Then you take you take the next diagonal, which is a22, and you find determinants using this these four. So that is determinant of a11, a12. A two one, A two two. Determinant should be greater than zero. And also, when you take A three three, that means you are doing determinant of the entire matrix. So that's determinant of the entire matrix. We know how to do. So determinant of, let's say, if I call this matrix A, then determinant of A should also be greater than zero. If you have these conditions, then you say that matrix A is positive definite. So obviously you can see that our answer is greater than zero, which is B. Okay. A matrix, next question. A matrix A is said to be positive definite, even only all the following holds except a matrix A is said to be positive definite if and only if all the following holds except so for it to be positive definite it has to be symmetric so we will get back to you on this question so Let's move on. All right. Now, this question is that a tri diagonal matrix T can be factorized into the products of two matrices. LU using the following algorithm. So, this they written here, it, you don't really need it. What you need was, or what you needed was the LU they giving you. That means you are, you are doing LU decomposition. So, all you have to do is that you extract your coefficient matrix. You extract your coefficient matrix. Hey. So you extract your coefficient matrix from the equations here, and then you, you perform your LU. So your lower triangular matrix here is just the L of your LU decomposition. So yeah. So you're just doing LU. So I'm sure you can all do this by this time. Alright. Now given the matrix A equals 1, 0. This matrix find all values of alpha for which okay so let me let me write the matrix so you have matrix as one zero negative one zero one one Negative one one alpha. 
And let's find all values of alpha for which a is singular. So for a to be singular, it means that for a to be singular, it means that the de determinant is zero or it doesn't have an inverse. So all you have to do is to find the determinant. So we find the determinant of this matrix. You have one times one 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 alpha. You ignore the zero because it will definitely go to zero. Minus one. You have zero one negative one one. That's bad. We have alpha minus one minus zero plus one. This will give us alpha minus one minus one equals alpha minus two. So this is our determinant. Now okay, so now for this matrix to be singular, it means the determinant should be zero. That means alpha minus two should be equal to zero, which implies that alpha is equal to two. Alright. So that's for the first one, A is singular. Next question is A is strictly diagonally dominant. So for diagonally dominant, we know that the magnitude of alpha should be greater than magnitude of negative one plus magnitude of one. Right. Okay, so that means I know that modulus can be positive or negative. So if we take the positive side, you can see that alpha is greater than one plus one. It implies that alpha is greater than two. Let me take the negative part. You can see that negative alpha is greater than negative one minus one. It implies that alpha is less than two. All right. Okay, so <laughs> so we have alpha is greater than two or alpha is less than two. So that that's our answer for this question. Less than negative. So this this Sorry. Oh. Hey. Okay, I'm saying that the modulus of alpha is greater than 1 plus 1. That means alpha should be greater than 2. Now, the modulus means that you can also have a negative alpha. That means a negative alpha should also be greater than 2. That's our alpha is less than negative 2. So, the answer is that alpha is less than negative 2. Or alpha is greater than two. Okay. This answer is B for fifty-seven. For fifty-eight, A is symmetric. For for a matrix to be symmetric, for a matrix to be symmetric, A should be equal to its transpose. So that means that when we transpose this matrix, it should be equal to A itself. If that happens, you see that this function is symmetric. Now, if you look at where alpha is, alpha is on the principal diagonal. Now, whenever you transpose a matrix, the principal diagonal doesn't change, which means that no matter the value of alpha, whenever you transpose, alpha will still be here. So we say that alpha is arbitrary or it can be any value at all. Yes. And the next question, 
alpha sorry a is positive definite for positive definite we know that the determinant of this entire matrix should be greater than zero and we, when we got our determinant our determinant was alpha minus two i think that this should be greater than zero it means that alpha should be greater than two which is c yes okay which of the following matrices has one as its leading diagonal element? So this is the lower triangular matrix of the tri-diagonal factorization. Like I was saying, when you are doing tri-diagonal factorization, it, it's either you are doing LU or they will ask you to do portion. Since they are talking about yes, the leading diagonal elements, whenever you are doing Try to try that when you're using um L U, you realize that your lower triangular matrix always has one 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 in part diagonal. For Koleski, it's H times H transpose, right? Yeah. So the H you are using is actually your upper triangle. Or the for Koleski, whenever you're doing it, your tra your principal diagonal has certain values. So you can see that the lower triangular matrix. So let's see factorization is one. Okay, so our answer becomes C. Next question. A square matrix A is said to be a lower triangular matrix if so for it to be lower triangular. For it to be lower triangular, you should have something like A11, A22, A33, A21, A31, A32. 0, 0, 0. This is a lower triangular matrix. Now, if we look at this matrix very carefully, we see that for it to be lower triangular, <coughs> Aij is not equal to 0. For i equal to j, or for i equal to, or for i greater than or equal to j. That is, when i is equal to j, we have values here. And when i is greater than j, we also have values here. This is i and this is j. Alright, that means for you to get zeros, your i must be less than j. Yes, so whenever your i is less than j, your aij goes to zero. So which makes our answer c. Right. <laughs> All right, so we are continuing. The following system is a, is a symmetric positive definite system which can be solved using Koleski factorization. This is the formula for Koleski factorization. All right, you are supposed to use this system to solve question 62 to 65. Now, if you look at 62, you see that it has no relation with this matrix over here. So, this is an a question on this one. I think that find beta so that A equals this is the determinant of the entire matrix must be greater than zero. When we did that, which I don't want to do, we got our answer as C. Oh, sorry, B. I didn't. <laughs> well, answer is B. Okay. Next question. Find the values of P and Q if H equals this. So they're giving you H, and you can do H transpose. So all you have to do is to find the product of H and H transpose. So. If H is this, H transpose will be 4, neg 1, 1, 0, 4, 3, 0, 0, 2. So this will be H. So this will be H transpose. This is 1. This is negative 1. So this will be H transpose. So I have to do, is do this multiplication, this by this. Then when you get your answer, you can compare it to you can compare it to 
the equation they've given you. So you can get your coefficient matrix from here. This will be your first term, um, second, third. So you can get your equation, equation from here. When you get your product of H and H transpose, you equate 10 plus 1 over 4P to the first value in the first column of your multiplication. Then you equate 2Q to the last value of your multiplication. And then you get your values for P and Q. And we did that. We got P as 24 and Q as 7. Right? And then from there, I believe you can continue solving these questions. I guess in case we had an answer here to be C and then 65. 65 as B. Okay. All right, so let's move on. The questions are being so we want to go through all the questions that will all be fine with everything we've done so far. Now, six computers with different processor speed were given a programming task. The time each computer used in completing the task was recorded. The following table contains data of speed of a computer with respect to time. All right. Now, if you look at this question critically, they've not told you anything about how to find L0. So what you can do is that you find the number of Lagrangian coefficients they found, which is L0, L1, and then L2. When you see that, you can see that they are doing a quadratic something, or their order is two. So now what you need to find next is the data points they used. Because you need to find out what C values to use and what V values to use. Okay. Now if you look at all the possible answers, you can see that there's 4.5, there's 5.2, and then there's 3, which is constant throughout. So you can see that the values they used, or the time values they used were 3, 4.5, and 5.2 which means that our corresponding speed will be 1.8, 1.6, and 1.2. So if they ask you to find L0, so from there you can see that your T0 is equal to 3, your T1 is equal to 4.5, and your T2 is equal to 5.2. Your corresponding V will be 1.8, 1.6, and 1.2. When they ask you for L0, of t since you know that your i is zero your j can be zero so you have x minus x1 but x naught minus x1 or multiplying x minus x2 over x naught minus x2 which will give you i'm using x as i should be using t so you have change t so you have t minus t1 is 4.5 over 4.5, sorry, over 3 minus 4.5, all multiplying t minus 5.2, all over 3 minus 5.2. So you can see I have your t minus 4.5, I have your t minus 5.2. All you have to do is find this value, find this value, and multiply them, and then you get one of your answers. And you get your answer to be D. I did the same thing for L1. L1 will be D. And L2 will be... L2 will be none. The value you got for L2 was 1 over 1.54. Most line T minus 3 t minus 4.5 you please you can confirm for us that's what we had so in case you, you got something different please let us know and after getting all these values you write them into your equation as l naught of t v of t naught plus l1 of t v of t1 
plus L2 of T being of T2. And then you, you put your value of T, you have a T in your equation. Now your T is given as 3.4 seconds. So you put the value of T inside and simplify. And that will give you... Okay, I think we didn't do that. But after getting all this, I believe you'll be able to solve this question very simply. So we move on. All right, this is nonlinear systems. The actuation methods for solving systems of linear equations can be given by. So, actually, this year, the lecture was very, very nice. I mean, he gave everything they needed. He gave them what B was. He told them what D was for Jacobi. He told them what B was for Gossidal. And he told them what D was for Gossidal. So, all you have to do compute the matrix B for Jacobi method. So you have to find your D from this matrix. And you know your D is diagonal matrix. So your diagonal matrix from here will just be the numbers on this diagonal. Everything else is zero. And you find the inverse. You know the inverse of a diagonal is just one over every parameter there. That will give you the inverse of the diagonal matrix. Or if, if, if it's difficult to remember, just use your calculator to do everything. It's the best option. You never make a mistake. So just find your D, your L, which is so your, this is your D, this is your L, and this is your U. So from there, I believe you can put the values into the, these equations and solve. Very, very simple. Please let's move on. All right. All right. So the table below shows results with some missing values from two iterations using Jacobi iterating method to solve the given linear system. So here, these are your k values, right? These are your k values. And your x values here are to the power k. So when k is 0, that means you have x1 to the 0, x2 to the 0. And what we know as these values are our initial solution. So this means that when k is 0, the values they're giving here is your initial solution. So that's what you use to do your iterations, to get for your first iteration, and then you use the values you get from here to solve your second iteration. How you do that? You'll be able to. I mean, so that's the method for solving these these kind of questions. Okay, so please let's move on. There are lots of questions, so we can't actually solve everything for you. So please take your time and solve all the questions. And if you have any challenge, please let us know. Let us know before the paper. Okay. So this is a similar question. This is using Gossidal. You know that this is your initial solution. The only thing, yeah. So you know that for Gossidal, what you get for x1, when I yeah, compute for x2, you put that x1 value there. I yeah, compute for x3, you put your x1 and x2 values in x3. And then when you're coming for x4, you put all these values here. So that's the difference between Gossidal and Jacobi, which I believe we all are aware at them at this moment. Yes. Now Interpolation. The power developed by a hydraulic system impulse turbine P by changing the bearing stock diameter D is found to be as follows. Alright. Now this they give you your D as this. And they say interpolate or use using third order Newton's divided difference. Okay. So we'll, we'll solve this question. Alright. So since it's third order. Say the third order. All right, we have our P to be equal to A naught plus A one D minus D naught. 
plus a2 d minus d naught d minus d1 plus a3 d minus d naught d minus d1 d minus d2 this is your general this is your general equation for your third order Newton's divided difference interpolation. Okay, so now we want to find a one. First of all, a naught is equal to our p of a naught. For a naught, there's no issue with that. But a one is giving us p of a one minus p of a naught. Sorry, d one. P of d one minus p of d naught all over d one minus d naught. That's a one. Which can also be written as p of d1 comma d naught. This is how it's written as. Alright. Uh, A2 is given as <laughs> p of d2 d1 d naught. Which is given as P of D2 minus P of D1 all over D2 minus D1 minus P of D1 D0. I don't want to write for the formula. Okay. All over D2 minus D0. So for A to the range, the actual range is from D2 to D0. So it's all over d2 minus d naught. The same thing. So you realize that the value you get here, you can't even put the same thing here. And just do this. So if you want a3, it's giving us p of d3, d2, d1, d naught, which is equal to p of d3 minus p of d2 all over d3 minus d2 minus p of d2 d1 d naught all over d3 minus d naught and i'll give you your answers for the coefficients okay so this will be the i get general equations so i'm clean them please all right so now let's solve our question now d is 0 0.73 so now we have to choose the set of data points that we use to interpolate this now 0 0.73 is around this area so we are going to you know that if we are doing two we are using two data points to interpolate we just use these two values now since we are using four on no, we have four unknowns. We need four data points. Now, what two data points do we, do we need? We have 0 0.73 here. So, we, we check whether we are using 0 0.4 or 1.0. How do you do that? You subtract 0 0.4 from 0 0.73. Then you subtract 0 0.73 from 1.0. Then now, the one that will give you the least value, you take that. So, we see that if we take this from this, we have 0 0.73. Two seven, and this will give us a zero point three three. So we take one point zero. Now we need one more set of data points. So we compare zero point seven three to zero point four and to one point two, and we see that it's closer to zero point four than to one point two. So that means our set of data points will be here. So this implies that our d not let me write it. Our d not is equal to. 0 0.4 our uh, d1 is equal to 0 0.6 d2 is 0 0.8 d3 is 0 sorry 1.0 all right so now let's okay now p 
our p of d naught is 20 the p1 here is 50 here is 105 and here is 180 okay now the first question is to find p d1 d naught p d1 d naught is giving us p d1 minus p d naught all over d1 minus d naught which is equal to now p d1 is 50 minus 20 all over 0 0.6 minus 0 0.4 which give us 30 over 0 0.2 150 right so we have we have 150 as our answer for okay find the divided difference for okay so let's move on to the next question p of d2 d1 d naught giving us p of d2 minus p of d1 all over d2 minus d1 minus p of d1 d naught all over d2 minus d naught so this will be giving us p d2 is 105 minus 50 all over 0 0.8 minus 0 0.4 minus we have value here to be 150 all over 0 0.8 minus 0 0.4 this will give us 312.5 sorry i can't evaluate with you hey so it is 0 0.6 okay so i think here would have given you a 275 so 275 minus 150, please your calculator can compute, I think 125 by 0.4. And we are saying that will give you a 312.5. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Now, so we have a 312. Let me keep this value because I'll need it. And then finally, we want so we have 312.5. I find a divided difference for this. So we have they want us to find P D3, D2, D1, D naught. It's giving us P D3 minus P D2 all on D3 minus D2 minus P D2 D1 D naught all over D3 minus D naught. Okay, so this will be oh sorry. Our P D3. Yeah. Please forgive me. Eh? Our PD3 is 180, 0, 1, 2, 3. So we have 180 minus 105 all over 1 minus 0 0.8 minus 312.5 all over 1 minus 0 0.4. And this will give us 70. Yeah. So we have at 375 minus 312.5 all on 0 0.6 and when you evaluate it, you get a 104.167 this option a all right okay so we've gotten our values for this. Now we have, we have to estimate the power developed. So after getting all these values, all you have to do is write your power equation by placing the A1, A2, A0, and A3. Your A0, like I said, your A0 is equal to your P, D0, which is 20. It will just be 20 plus 150 and the and the expression continues then you just replace d with 0 0.73 meters and that will give you a value of 82.593 megawatts and that ends that question okay given okay. 
given for this use fixed point iteration where they have been giving you the formula to use oh like the exams was was really chill so well so this is what this is the formula i'm going to use they, they've given your x and x they are saying use <laughs> they've made x and the subject for you already x and the subject for you already they are telling you to use this formulation that's it that means they are telling you that this gene of x1 x2 x3 is actually differential like it satisfies this equation so you don't have to do anything about it. you just have to use this one fixed points so using our first initial solution at zero zero if i put zero zero here my x1 will be equal to 8 over 20 which is 0 0.4 it's if i put 0 here my x2 will be 8 over 5 which is 1.6 so answer for a is d <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Right, next question. But if, if you are doing it yourself, after, after getting an equation, please first differentiate and put your initial solutions into know whether your value that you get is less than one. If that's the case, that means your equation you're using is right. Before you do fixed points or yeah, before you do fixed points, fixed point. If not, your answers will be wrong. It's very, very important. So we are actually hoping that all the questions at the fixed point will be as simple as this, so that we won't have to worry ourselves. Now this, you are supposed to do the second iteration. For, so for the second iteration, you have to do is that put your 0 0.4 as x1 and your 1.6 as x2 and solve again. When you do that, you get... You get answer to be D. Okay. And then the last question here. He said, do find the Jacobi matrix. Okay. Now how do you find the Jacobi matrix? That means we are not doing fixed points anymore. We are doing Newton's method. It has even been stated here. It has even been stated in the question that the Newton's method for solve. Okay. And they will give you the equation. So you have to get a Jacobi matrix. So all you have to do, all you have to do is that you write. So this is your first equation. This is your second equation. That means your first f of your first f of x one, x two, x three is equal to this whole thing. And your second, so this is your f one, and your f two is this. So this is F2 and this is F1. So what you have to do for your Jacobian Jacobi matrix is you take F1, differentiate it with respect to X1. So what you, what you get here is 8X1 minus 20. Then you differentiate with, with respect to X2. You get half X2. You are done with X1. Go here. It's in just X1 and X2. So you have a 2 by 2. Go to F2, differentiate with respect to X1. With respect to X1, you'll get how X2 squared plus X, sorry, plus 2. Then here, with respect to X2, you'll get X1, X2 minus 5. They said find the Jacobi. They didn't say find the inverse. They just want you to find the Jacobi matrix. So to get this J at X naught, you have to come and put your initial solution inside, which is zero zero. So that, that means you get a negative twenty, a zero, a two, and a negative five, which I believe is not in our answers. Mm 
All right. So that's it. That means our answer here is E, which is none. It's not in the options. Okay. Now you're supposed to find the functional value. Functional value f. So I've told you that our f is f1, f2. So there's a vector. This f1 is f2. All you have to do is that you put your initial solution inside. So if I put 0, 0 here, I put 0, 0 and 0 here, that means I'll get an 8 for the first term. I'll also get an 8 for the second term. So this is my f of x0. 8, 8. Which is D, option D. Okay, now I switch to iterate. This is too much work for us. <laughs> so please. Please do it for us, okay? So that you get used to it. Very, very important. Okay. Oh. Oh. So we actually were compassionate enough to do it for all of you. <laughs> so, <laughs> 94, when we did the first iteration, we got C. Great news. 95, we got A. 96, we got E, none, because the answer we got actually was 1.4144, 7. 7.4, 4, 4, 4, 4, and it's not part of the option, so we chose E. All right. Okay. So we got E for 96. And then 97. Find a second. Oh, that one. We're not able to solve for you. We are so sorry. So please do it yourself. I'm sure you'll be able to do it. Very simple. Now, trapezium rule. So we are, we've got into numerical integration. So for the trapezium rule, it's actually the same thing we all did in SHS, which is integral from A to B of your f of x dx. Now, we are saying that this integration is too difficult for us. So we are going to approximate. So what's your numerical integrations? What they are doing is that they are giving you an approximate value of what you will get if you actually do the normal integration, the definite integration but that's what we are doing we are actually giving an approximate value so, so for trapezium group from shs you know is h over 2 multiplying f of a plus f of b plus f of b why this formula this formula is from the fact that if you have a graph in this form and you want to find the area I and mean, integration is area so if you want to find the area you can actually Draw, please. My diagram is very, very bad. Pardon me. Draw columns like this, <laughs> and you realize that if you're able to connect all these, which I can't do for you very well, you see that we have, <laughs> you see that we have a trapezium. Hey, please forgive me. So, we have something like a trapezium, which my diagram is not telling, but that's what I'm supposed to get. <laughs> Wait. Let's say he has A, he has B, this value has F of B, and this value has F of A. So you know that for, you know that for a trapezium, if you want the area, it is half of the sum of, half of the sum of the parallel sides. The parallel sides are this side and this side and the length here is f of a plus f of b so this is half of this times the height which is h we are saying h now our height is this this point this is our height these are our parallel sides so this is our height now the height is moving from a to b so you can see that h is equal to b minus a which will make the, the general formula 
become b minus a all over 2 multiplying f of a plus f of b so this is what we actually did in shs that's a short recap now let's move on to what we are doing in university okay so the, the university they've added something small to it what they've done is that now you're not going to use your initial and final values you're not going to just use your initial and final values you're going to do multiple segments the reason you're doing that is that if you just use your initial and final value the value you get has a larger error it has a larger error and you know that if you have a, a certain area and you want to uh, uh, um, how do you call it you have you have a surface you have a surface then you, you want to find the area and you divide it into multiple pieces and find the area of each of the points realize that you can get an approximate area of the figure now what you get from that is that the smaller your intervals or the smaller the boxes you are using the higher your accuracy so if we use if we just divide into two fb and fb our accuracy is very very low what we are going to do we are going to do segmentation we are going to divide into multiple segments and then the higher the number of segments the higher the accuracy so the higher the number of segments the higher the accuracy so to do that we have to do that we have to know the number of steps to use how do we get to know that so we know our height as b minus a so we we'll divide our height by a certain number which you call the number of segments that we want to do if we want to do four segments we divide b minus a by four and this will be our new h and what this h is telling us is telling us that if you move from f of a is always your starting point now you move from f of a your next point to be f of a plus h your next point to be this plus h so that will be your intervals you are using and what you should take note is that the number if you have four multiple segments you should have an ex expression containing five <laughs> five individual expressions exactly so if you have if the number of segments is four you should have five expressions here so now here because our n is one because we are just using b minus a because our n is one we have two expressions if your n is two you should have three expressions if your n is four you have five expressions that is just by the way in case something of that sort comes all right so now what will be our general formula if we are doing if we are creating segments so it will be b minus a over 2n and n comes here because the n here is representing the segments okay then you have an f of a plus two times let's say an f of a1 plus two times an f of a2 plus dot 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 plus f of b right that's how your formula becomes okay now let's solve the question since we are we, we know all this now let's solve the question or oh, before we solve the question i think i should mention simpson's rule now simpson's rule is very similar to jacobian hey sorry the trapezium rule and the only, the only difference is that now since we have to we have the one third and the two eight this is the one third so for the one third you should make sure that you have a one one over three of each now so the one over three is telling you that so the one over three is telling you the type of sensing you are, you are doing okay so since it's one over three you know that you are doing the one third and for the one third the only difference between that and the trapezium is that your expression becomes f of the first one plus four times all the odd numbers inside so all your odd numbers you must write them, them by four all your even numbers you must write them by two all your odd ones you must write them by four all your even you must write them by two 
plus your f of b okay so for the trapezium we're almost done for the trapezium you know that this from two one to two we have four panels so that means our h should be two minus one all over four and we use an h of 0 0.25 and if our first value is 1, f of 1, our second value will be 2 times f of 1.5. Our third value will be 2 times f of 1.5, 2 times f of 1.75, and finally f of 2. Like I said, this is 4. That means this should be 5 expressions. So this plus this plus this plus this. And your f of x is giving us lin x so you can find you can do your trapezium rule you can also do your simpsons using the same formula i gave now this is two panels so that means your n is two for this one i think when you do this you'll get something around d and then 99 will be Next now be e. We had a twelve point zero one around that, so we chose e as our answer. Now the final five questions. Let's just do Newton interpolation. So this is similar to what we did before. So we already done these questions. So I'll just tell you the answers. For for number hundred, we had negative zero point two one two five. We had 0 0.05 here. Sorry, negative 0 0.05. We had 0 0.25 here. And now this expression, you have to be very careful when you are, when you are doing this because Newton is expressed as A0 plus A1 T minus T0 plus A2 T minus T0 T minus T1. Now, after getting your a naught, which we, we get that by just putting x naught here, we have 0 0.5 plus. We have a1 is, this will be minus 0 0.125. Let's say t, let me, let me use x, x minus our x naught is 2. Plus our a2, we got as 0 0.025. 0 0.025 times x minus 2, x minus four now you have to expand this if you don't take care you choose none because when you, when you look at the coefficients here they are not in the expression but you have to expand this equation to get 0 0.025 x squared minus 0 0.275 x plus 0 0.95 which is B. Alright, so be very, very careful. We have to expand it before you can choose your answer. Now, when you get it, you have to just put 5.4 in X. When you do that, you get B as your answer. And then finally, the question that we couldn't wrap our heads around please, if someone could find an answer to this question and explain to us, we'll be very, very grateful. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much for. Bear with us. It was a very long session and we've gone through a lot of questions. We've actually gone through all everything we've done this semester. So please just <laughs> so, <laughs> so we have our our boss, our own our own chairman of the academic board, our one and only Tamaku Kelvin Wolanyo. He's the one who helped us answer all these questions. In fact, he has been very, very, we are very, very grateful to him because without him, I don't think this live session would have been possible. He has been having sleepless nights answering all these 105 questions. So thank you very much for being with us. Subscribe to this channel. And we on for probability and statistics tomorrow too. So please tune in to our live session tomorrow. Have a good evening, but have a wonderful evening. And all the best in your exams <laughs> tomorrow. A special thanks to Abne Jewa who helped me throughout.
Alright. Okay, 